Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is The Best Damn EDC, and today I would like to talk about grails. What a grail actually is, why I think the term is mostly misused by most people, and what my actual grail is. So with that said, let's do the damn thing. So what is a grail? You hear it all the time in EDC. My grail knife, grail watch, grail flashlight, grail everything. People throw around the term grail so willy nilly, but I think most people are misusing it. They're, they're basically using it to explain something they want, something that maybe they can't afford right now, something that you know is hard to get. And there is some truth to calling something like that a grail, but in the truest sense of the word, the, the technical definition, according to Merriam-Webster, is the object of an extended or difficult quest. An Oxford definition is a thing that is being earnestly pursued or sought after. So I think the Oxford definition is more along the lines of how most people are using it, but the Merriam-Webster is more along the lines of what most people really mean. So if you think about it, like the Holy Grail, it's something that people just search and search and work to find and it's something you may never ever get in your life. So the first thing that comes into question here is someone's budget. And I think that's where most people like to use this term, something that extends their budget a little bit. Uh, and I understand that. It's something that you have to work towards, but in, in the truest form of the word, a grail is something that you might work for for an eternity and never be able to buy. Be it because it's too expensive, it's too rare, they're not in production anymore. Like something that is outside of your control makes this thing very difficult to buy. And I'm not minimizing, you know, a purchase for somebody. I just think a grail is something that is special. It's something that you should really strive to improve yourself to accomplish something and buy, right? I would get myself a grail if I've accomplished something that I've worked really, really, really hard for. I bought myself at the time, the most expensive watch I'd ever owned when I hit 100,000 subscribers. And a lot of you, if you've been following since I started this channel, think that I hit 100,000 subscribers very, very quickly compared to a lot of other channels. And it was a fast rise for this channel, but what most of you don't realize is that I've been working towards that for like six or seven years. Uh, the channel, this is a second channel for me. The first channel never made it. I worked really hard on it and it just, it fell short. It's at like 95,000 subscribers now. And that was like five or six years of hard work. Anytime I had free time, I was working on it. And uh, yeah, so I finally hit it with this channel and I rewarded myself with a $500 watch, which in retrospect, I think my cheapest watch right now is a $500 watch. So yeah, the, the goalpost can be moved as you go along, but I, I do truly think a grail is something that you should be working towards for a very, very long time. Something you've got to search super hard to find or work extra hard to accomplish, say that next level and then buy it. That's what I think a grail is. Not just something that you could save for, for six months or a month or a year and buy. It's something that really pushes you and tests your limits and, and is actually truly difficult for you to get. I know that's a lot of word vomit and maybe you disagree. Tell me what you really think a grail is in the comments down below. And actually, because we're about to do this now, uh, tell me what your grail is. If you've got a knife, watch, flashlight, whatever, tell me about your grails in the comments down below. But because I get this question so much, I decided that I was gonna go through an entire EDC and talk about what if I had no money constraints, no scarcity constraints, nothing like that, what would my grail carry be? And, and the truth is, I kind of have most of what I really want. Like deep down, there are things that I just don't really long for because I've gotten most of what I think is like some of the best gear available. So with that said, let's start with the pen. Uh, of course, pens are, are different for everybody and there are people who really like writing with really nice fancy pens. I'm not the guy that's ever gonna want a Mont Blanc. I just, they don't do anything for me. Uh, but But I do have what I think are commonly considered the best pens that you can get. 
uh, and some unreleased pins. So I am very fortunate in that sense. But I have a Zerk bolt action pin from Big Idea Design, a Zerk uh, tactile turn bolt action slim, Rimsmo Saga, and the unreleased tie scribe goes from Urban Survival Gear. So I've got a lot of pins. I've got like, I don't know, 10 Urban Survival Gear pins, probably more tactile turn and probably even more big idea design pins and one, one saga. But beyond this, it's really just getting some really uber custom Phil Holter tie bolt. Like that's, I think really, the only thing. In researching this video, I came across a pin that was really, really cool. Um, and I'm gonna read out the entire name here. And it just it sounds like word vomit. Uh, this is a Fellholter tie bolt in zirconium fluted with a Nath's custom Mokutai clip and Zerkuti Teta Tools cap spin. It's a wild looking pin. It looks really, really cool. And it, it's probably very, very difficult to find everything and put it all together um, due to scarcity, price, and everything. The total price of this pin is actually probably close to all of these combined, which is pretty crazy. It's like $900. Uh, the Teta Tools cap spin is just a spinner for the top of it. It's $200. The clip is $150 plus, because I couldn't find what one of those actually costs. And the pin, the zirconium fluted tie bolt, from Fellholter was about $560. So that pin alone is the price of like two of these together. So the pin baseline starts pretty high. I think it goes up to like 900, 1,000. I've seen some very expensive Fellholters, uh, but I, I don't really have a massive desire to get any of those. One pin that I did want for a very long time though was a Zerk tactile turn and I got one. So there we go. I think the same could be said for wallets. I think most would agree that most wallets out there are not prohibitively expensive, so you can just kind of buy what you want. I think the only thing that maybe I could see myself spending and splurging on is like a Shell Cordovan wallet, but you know, that's also not something that I think would be really, really, really hard to come by. And I, I have a great selection of wallets as it is. I've got a drawer full of wallets and I have my own, which is, is really cool. Collaborations with Redeemed Creations, the Carry Commission two-tone front pocket bifold and the Slim. Uh, and then two of my favorite hard wallets I have the uh, Vice Hardware F22 Raptor. Talked about this a little bit since Blade Show. Really cool, kind of spendy wallet. And then the most minimal wallet I have, card holder really, is the Giltec Rapid Access Wallet. Uh, all of these are fairly attainable, this one being the most expensive at $300, which some of you find insane. And then of course, we've got uh, Open Sea Leather with the Hubei 2.0 and the Top Sider. Love all of his work. I could just see myself maybe getting a Shell Cordovan Open Sea when he does runs of those, but even then, I have like a $100 wallet. So most of these are not gonna be prohibitively expensive for most people. Um, a $300 titanium wallet is definitely a splurge, but not outrageously expensive. Really, I think the only thing that you could do in terms of like increasing the scarcity or price of a wallet is maybe doing something like a Vice Hardware wallet or even a Giltec Raw in like zirconium or something. And then the price might go up to five, six, seven hundred dollars but you know, there have been Zerk wallets in the past from EOS. I'm not exactly sure what EOS stands for. I can't remember, but they made a Zerk wallet and I think it was only like three or $400. So yeah, it's it's kind of tough for wallets, but uh, if I had to choose one for like a grail carry, it'd be probably this right here in Shell Cordovan, a Hubei 2.0 or Topsider. When it comes to flashlights, we're getting more into the territory of things that are very scarce and can get very expensive in a hurry. So for example, many of you are astounded when I talk about the Okluma DC Zero. This is like a $450 flashlight and the CWF Micro Arcadian TI Clicky. Both of these spendy flashlights over $400 and very hard to find. So something like this could be absolutely be a grail because they do drops, they're not always available and they're kind of spendy. But you can take it one level further and uh, these sometimes, Jeff from Okluma does runs of DC zeros in zirconium and that takes the price up to a cool $1,700. $1,700, so that would definitely be a grail for me. And maybe even this one, I really, really love the Micro Arcadian. It's just the perfect size and super bright. 
Getting this in Zerk would be so nice. Flashlights can easily get super expensive. I've seen several thousand dollar flashlights. And uh, for me, I think this one, the DC Zero in Zirconium would be the grail flashlight for me. 1700 for a flashlight's tough. That's a tough, that's a tough spend. So for the knife, this is the question I get the absolute most. If money were not an issue, what knife would you buy? And truth be told, I have a lot of knives that originally I would have considered grails. Most importantly, this one right here, this is the Spyderco Nirvana. I sought this knife out for a long time. By the time I discovered this knife, shortly after I started the channel, these were already discontinued and pretty tough to come by. You see them pop up fairly regularly, but you can only buy these used. So sometimes the price is jacked up a little. I waited it out and finally got a good price on one. The timing was right. I pulled the trigger and I paid $400 for the Spider Spyderco Nirvana, which is about what it was retail. So it wasn't, you know, a massively expensive knife. It's in the ballpark of a, a Hinderer or Chris Reeve knife. But then I graduated a little bit and went to, you know, the thousand dollar budget range with the Shurgorov F95RT and a Grimsmo Norseman. And uh, both of these are definitely luxury items, very expensive, very high precision machined production knives, $1,000 roughly. I think this one was like 990 and originally this one was 1100 bucks, but I think I paid 700 for it. So this definitely gets you into that upper echelon of not upper echelon of knives, but next level beyond, you know, Chris Reeve hinderer, uh, high end production knives in America. You can get a little higher end. <clears throat> you can go a little higher end by looking at things like Shurgorov and Grimsmo. But for me and a lot of people, it, the grail knife comes down to a custom something that is made by our favorite designer, you know, small batch by hand, not mass produced. That is the true grail for a lot of people. That definitely increases the scarcity because somebody's making it by hand and they're not being pumped out. It's, it's a much more time consuming and much more intimate process with the maker. And a lot of them are one-offs or customs or maker's choice. So you don't always get exactly what you're looking for. So that also increases that scarcity. It narrows that scope of what you're looking for down to a, like a fine point, unless you are talking with the maker and doing a, a buyer's choice, which is also possible. What I'm talking about basically is I did get what was one of my grails at Blade Show this year, a custom Pena Mula with the butterscotch micarta. This thing is so, so sweet, uh, but it was 700 bucks, right? So definitely not on the upper echelon of knives. So what would be my grail if I were to buy a knife with no money or scarcity standing in my way, what would it be? A lot of you could probably guess. It would actually be a custom version of their Nirvana from Peter Asinti. He has different versions of it. He's got a smaller one. I would probably go with a slightly smaller, the Nirvana 3.0 beautiful knife and it's probably what would be my grail. Uh, it wouldn't take a lot of digging for me to find one used. I could probably do that within a month or two. Uh, it's just stomaching that price two, $3,000 for a knife is, it's not a bridge that I've crossed yet and it's not one I'm quite ready to cross. I like having a bunch of knives, but spending that much on one knife is uh, not something I'd be against. It's just something I haven't, I haven't ripped that bandaid off. And it's just one of those things. I'm not ready to rip the bandaid off because once you rip that bandaid off, it's easier to do it the next time. Buying a $50 knife for me was a really tough decision a few years ago. And then after that, a hundred dollar knife was a tough decision. And then a $200 knife, that was a tough decision. But every time after you do it the first time, it just gets way easier the next time. And that, that can be dangerous. There is one other knife that I would consider a grail, and it would be the custom version of this right here. This is the Richard Rogers Design Slim Utility, or slut, uh, but the, the custom versions of these are just super nice, really rare, and also expensive. Not prohibitively expensive, uh, but secondary, they get really expensive in a hurry. It's just a, a scarcity thing. Finding one and finding it at the right time for the right price makes it a grail. Finally, a watch. This is definitely the second most asked question about grails for me. Um, and this one I think is a whole lot easier to really narrow down and pick something because watches 
get so much more expensive, so much faster than anything else. You can jump from $50 to $500 in watches and not really even break out of that budget watch, right? A $500 watch is a good watch, a great watch, but you're still just scratching the surface of the low end budget with a $500 watch. A $500 knife, on the other hand, is really, really good. And you know, it's a small scope beyond say 500 to 2000. There are some that extend beyond that in knives, two, four, five thousand, six thousand dollar knives. But when you're talking watches, that's like the mid tier range for watches, right? So 2000 to $10,000 is mid tier, right? Then your upper end goes to, you know, $50,000 watches, 40, 50, $60,000 watches, $90,000 watches, $100,000 watches, and million dollar watches from Richard Mill, or uh, you have even like sometimes a million dollar watches from J Jacob & Co. They make tourbillons and the Astronomia, that's a million dollar watch, those things are nuts. So watches are way easier to lust after if you're into watches. Uh, because they can get so expensive. Watches, there are things that you could save for an eternity, for your entire life, and never be able to afford. Because some of those watches are meant for the 1% of the 1%. I mean, how many people really own a million dollar watch? But for me, what watch would I want? It's honestly a very easy decision. Alex guessed the other day that it would be a, a Speedmaster. Yeah, I want a Speedmaster. I really want one, but I wouldn't consider it a grail. It's something that I could buy with relative ease in a span of time. Everybody else on the stream that I did on Monday guessed a Rolex. Nope, I'm not really a Rolex guy. And I would like a Tudor Black Bay 58. Not a grail, not a grail. They're three, $4,000. Expensive, not a grail. My grail comes down to two watches from one brand and it's a toss up. Uh, Rescence. If you haven't heard of them, look them up. It's an oil filled automatic watch. It's just super cool engineering and it looks amazing. It looks like a bubble on your wrist. So I had a Young Hands Max Bill Chronoscope before. Loved that watch. And that's not really the budget friendly version of a Rescence. They're, they're similar in that they both look like bubbles on your wrist, but one is a $1,400 watch. The other is a $40,000 watch and uh, they are beautiful. Uh, most people probably wouldn't call them beautiful. They're just really cool. They're unique and there's not much like them out there and they are wildly expensive. Um, I can't say that I would ever buy one, especially not new. You can find them used for much more reasonable prices because they don't hold their value super well, but that's not why I would be buying one. A lot of people who buy like a Rolex, they're buying it because they know that it's just gonna go up in value. Um, that's, not, that's not fun. It's a good investment, but for me, if I'm buying something to reward myself, I don't want to be worried about the investment or how much it's going to increase or decrease in value. I want to buy what I want. And the watch that I would want, if money were not an issue, is a Resonance Type 3 or Type 5. So there you have it. That is my grail. Basically, a really custom Fellhalter Tybolt or just one of the pins I already have. Maybe a Zirconium wallet from EOS or if Vice Hardware did a Zirconium wallet, that'd be really sweet. A Zerk flashlight from Okluma would be a really, really sweet flashlight to have, but pretty spendy. The knife would be a custom Nirvana, probably a Nirvana 3.0. And then the watch, a, a Resonance Type 3 or Type 5. That would bring my total custom EDC to something like Let's do the math real quick. That would bring my Grail EDC to somewhere in the ballpark of $50,000. It's pretty expensive. Let me know in the comments down below what your Grail is and uh, if you've ever acquired one piece of your Grail. That's it guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. If you wanna support what I'm doing here, hit the links in the description down below. Many of those are affiliate links. You can also go to patreon.com forward slash bestsamedc or carrycommission.com where you can buy gear and merch directly from me. Be sure to follow us around the web. And of course, until next time, carry on.